Hey everyone, welcome back. Albert Pavone here with the Pavone team. And of course, Kevin Coleman with SWBC. We, uh, we started, you know, we really get into these conversations mm -hmm. and we noticed how long it was going. So we said, hey, let's break this up uh, because it's a lot to watch and a lot to take in. But we, we're definitely passionate about what we do. Uh, so we figured we'd break this up into a couple segments. So really quick, four buyers out there who are thinking about buying a home, all right? And I know it's simple basics for us, but we wanna make sure that you understand them as well. Um, what does a buyer need to actually go get pre-approved for a loan? Like, what does that actually mean for that buyer getting pre-approved? Like, I, and not to cut you off, mm -hmm. I, I watch buyers tell me all the time, says, hey, I called my bank, my bank said, I can go ahead and go find a house for X dollars. Okay. Then I ask them, I go, great, did you give them your tax returns? No, I didn't. And I, I go, okay, did you send your, right. your bank statements? No, I didn't. I, I went over the phone, they checked my mm -hmm. credit, based off of the income I told them I receive, I can go okay. I can go buy a home. So how, how does it work with you guys? Well, we've actually, we're trying to take pre-approvals an extra step. So in the past, when we would pre-approve you, we'd get your income documents, pull credit, run the automated underwriting system. What, get is, your, that? what is that that's mean? That's what Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac offer. So it's either loan prospector or desktop underwriter. Don't ask. Is that, is that a computer? That yeah, that's like? a, yep, it is. And um, it, it's very valuable in the mortgage lending world. So we'd have you, we'd have your documents, have your credit pulled, have you pre-approved in the automated underwriting system, and then I'd issue a pre-approval letter. In return, you'd take that pre-approval letter. So let me slow you down. Yep. So you take information. Yep. It goes in. Yep. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Yep. Runs an analyst on it. Yes, they do. And then they spit out to you an approval. And that approval is price. It, well, it tells me, yeah. Okay. I, 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 I usually pre-approve you to the max you can go up to, so what you about your maximum buying power. Does it calculate taxes and insurance? Yeah, I come up with a fictitious number that I feel is going to be in that price I, range. I think it's very important buyers understand that part, mm -hmm. because just because you're pre-approved for 600000 yeah, right, there's still taxes and an estimated insurance. And an HOA if applicable. An yeah. HOA if applicable. So you, we have to look at all that yeah. with, with those pre-approvals. Mm -hmm. So if you're working with a realtor that's not us big mistake but <laughs> if you're working with a realtor and you say that you're pre-approved for six hundred thousand you know the first question i do is i call the lender up and i say hey what did you use for taxes and insurance what did you calculate for hoa yep. so that i can still keep my my buyer in the right parameters yep. you know so sorry continue no so that's the traditional way for pre-approval we get gather your documents pull credit run the automated underwriting system but as times change, it, buyers have to be more competitive to, you know, when they're competing against other buyers to get the home under contract. So recently we've um, basically changed our pre-approval process to where that we can actually do a formal loan application on a to be determined property, collect the same items that we would essentially, essentially up front, you mm -hmm. know, pay stubs, W-2s, tax returns, bank statements, credit, identification, everything else. But now we will actually submit your loan to underwriting. And within 24 to 48 hours, instead of just giving you a pre-approval letter, we'll give you an actual loan approval, which in essence can be deemed mm. a loan commitment. That's very nice. It, so when we give you the commitment, we'll set it up at a price mm -hmm. with the amount you want to put down. We'll plug in the estimated taxes, homeowners insurance, and HOA payment if you're looking at HOA homes. And then instead of you going around with the pre-approval letter with Albert, you're going around with an actual loan commitment and the conditions on the commitment generally are going to be the appraisal title work to the home homeowners insurance to the home and getting a purchase contract now i'm just asking mm -hmm. but is it is that stronger than a du a lot stronger than a du because that that's like a, a du two steps above okay so and there's a couple of good this can help out with a few different situations number one when you actually go to make an offer on a house, now, after the appraisal comes back and the title work comes back clear, you're mm -hmm. kind of in the- Ready to go. Yeah, you're ready to go. Well, so, so not to cut you off, yeah. but just so people understand on the mm -hmm. real estate side. So when we're hired to help our buyers go find yeah. a home, right? When we're, let's just take an as is contract, for example, yep. right? So. On page two, we have to fill out a certain section that says, when will we have that loan approval yep. by? 
And part of that loan approval is obviously the appraisal coming in, which is a, a very, that was a big change that they did yep. this year. Um, mm -hmm. Appraisal has to be in in order to get the conditional loan approval. Yes. But what a lot of buyers don't understand is if we don't get that loan approval within the time period that we put in there, mm -hmm. They get put their deposit up at risk. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Definitely. So what Kevin here is explaining to you is that they actually get you that loan conditional approval out of prior major, to buying the house. Yeah, yeah. Like a yeah. huge head start. Yeah. So I mean that's that to me it, that is that is it's icing a big on the head cake. start. And it really I mean, if you're competing against four financed offers and Albert can go to the listing agent and say, Hey, my buyer's already approved with their lender. Here's the loan commitment. Basically, this is what we need to purchase the house. It, I, just, it, I need an appraisal. It has to help. Yeah. Appraisal and title. Yeah, I mean, it has to help, I would have it to does. assume. No, no, that's, yeah, that is definitely. huge. I didn't know that. All right, so really quick disclaimer. After we shot that last video, um, I have to stay and correct it. So you can get a loan approval before your appraisal's in, okay? Just so you understand that. What you can get is final approval before that appraisal's in. Don't worry, we got you covered. We'll make sure that it's in before the loan approval. Yeah. So is that new? Very new, yes. Very, very new, new to the program. Well, we have to, you know, like with, with the times, we have to continue to evolve yeah. and make sure that we're given the best possible products we have available to our, you know, yeah. borrowers. Well, one, one of the things I really like about you guys being direct, mm -hmm. uh, direct lenders, everything happens in-house. Yes, correct. So the, your guys' speed for stuff to me, um, we already live in a very stressful situation. As, as your realtor, yep. we try to eliminate stress out of your life so that you don't notice what's happening in the background. I think it's already stressful enough trying to find I completely agree. And I, I'm a strong person. I like to say to a um, you know, person buying a house, because a lot of times everybody hears horror stories that getting the mortgage and going through underwriting is terrible. They ask for things 10 different times. Um, it, it, I don't want that to be a process that you look frown upon or think was a terrible process. I'd rather you say at the end, Kevin, I did, you know, that was great. Yeah. The most stressful part of buying the house was figuring out how to get the water turned on. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I, I would much rather that be the stress that you're dealing with than dealing with the loan approval process of itself. So, if we go the route of getting you actually underwritten and approved at the beginning, it, it takes a lot off. It takes a lot off the table. Do you know why it's so stress, uh, stressful for getting the water on? Uh, yeah, they want the deed. <laughs> they, want, they want the deed. Yeah. So they collect, uh, yeah. when you look at the closing statement, yeah. they collect for the last water yeah, bill. Yeah, and they want the but whole it, bag. But yeah, yeah, so it doesn't get mailed out until yeah. after the closing, yep. and then the buyer goes to turn it on and says, I can't turn it on yeah. until this bill's paid. Yeah, until this, yeah. So that, that always gets a little messy. No, I know it does. And that's, that, I, there's always got to be but something. But hey, if that's the most stressful situation, that that's was okay. A, that was a good transaction. Yeah, absolutely. That was definitely. a good transaction. We 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 pride ourselves like when when we have our buyer, mm -hmm. like we keep them. We have a we have a thing called a path to closing. So we actually let them know the entire time where they are, where they sit in the transaction, and they get um, they get a series of videos. They get um, an email, mm -hmm. and it has an entire checklist for them on which step they're at. It it's so hard, you know what I mean. So we definitely definitely want to eliminate the stress from them oh yeah but having something like this man i i'm that is golden so i'm, yeah, I'm glad you bring it up and family about it please <laughs> <laughs> so no no that is that is definitely definitely golden yep um what are you seeing as far as like appraisals lately have you seen any nightmares or anything no i mean we we have a panel of appraisers that we use in our area and we try to use the same appraisers over and over again if you turn in good work we want to use you we try to get them back within seven days from when we order so we can get that solidified on the value on the house in itself. So so I have this conversation a lot with yep. sellers. And I tell them, hey, look, when we're when we're looking, we're, when we're running comparables in the mm -hmm. sale of a home, I say, hey, not every sale happens cash. Yep. Not every buyer has the cash to pay for the difference. Mm -hmm. right? And maybe we need to do a whole video on appraisals and, yep. and the issues that exist out there. But when it comes, when we're trying to analyze where the price should be, yep. we have to take into account what the appraiser is going to oh, to do and think. Now, you mentioned to me on appraisal panels mm -hmm. that they're actually being kind of monitored in the background. Yeah. Oh, like, can we talk about that? Yeah, well, go ahead. So um, they're rated by a score? Yeah. Well, the we, appraisals we receive are scored when they go through the underwriting system. And higher the score, the better. And obviously, we want appraisers who get high scores. So, 
So, but high scores because they're getting more appraisals done, or high scores because high, they're getting more appraisals right? No quality. So it would it would be quality as in what the, basically it, it's hard to describe, but basically what's adequate adjustments up and down on a house. For example, if you buy a home that was I'm just going to throw a, a day out there that was built in 2000 and it hasn't been updated since 2000, and then the same house next door is selling for twenty five thousand dollars more, but it has all new kitchen counters, all new appliances. Mm -hmm. Even though they're the same house built the same year, there's probably going to be a price difference between the two. There should be. Yeah, yeah there should <laughs> be. And an appraiser should adjust it accordingly, yeah. you know, versus what's in there. So that's where quality score comes in, how they handle different homes. Because you might have a bunch of homes in the same neighborhood that are the same model, but that doesn't mean they're cookie cutter the same exact home. Yeah. What, what somebody's put into it. Is well, what... there, there's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of f different factors. Absolutely. A hundred percent. So the appraisal process gets complex. Correct. You yes. Know? And I bet you moving forward, we're mm -hmm. going to notice appraisers mentioning is the market appreciating because there's a box there that they yes. show if it's appreciating mm -hmm. or if they'll put that it's just flatline. Yep. We, we could go. F I don't know if necessarily we'll go flatline. They, the appraisers were super aggressive, in my opinion, with market appreciation on sales that took place months prior to. Mm -hmm. I do foresee normalcy returning to where that price appreciation might be like 5% per year yeah. versus 20 to 30% that took place 2020 and 2021. Normalcy is not a bad thing. No, no, and, no, no. <laughs> and I, I've, you could, in essence, say that that price appreciation point from the time value of when the prior sale took place will be cut down in the future. Big time. We could. Yeah. It, there's probability in my eyes i think so no we're already watching it normalize which yeah. which i like I, i'll tell you in the previous segment i mentioned that sellers are still being unrealistic about the market that they wish they were in and buyers are being very unrealistic in the interest rate that they wish were still around mm -hmm. i'll tell you who else is being unrealistic are a lot of the new realtors who are out there mm -hmm. so if they haven't seen Look, if you got your license two years ago and basically grabbed a listing mm -hmm. and you put it up on the market, yeah, someone comes by and pays you 20000 more to get the property. Well, you know what? That was pretty easy. Yep. You, your job as a realtor is just try to pick the best offer, yep. which the highest price isn't always the best yep. offer. But I think realtors are being very unrealistic because they don't understand what a DOM is, days on market. Yep. You know, they're like... I. I love it when a realtor calls me from outside to ask me, you know, hey, uh, my house isn't selling. What, are you getting anybody, any traffic on your property? You know, and yep. I could just tell, I could tell that they're very new. Yeah. Like they don't understand what average days on market is. Well, average, average days on market 2020 and 21 are not real. 24 hours is not. Yeah, that's not normal. It's not normal. No. Uh, but it's it's just showing, hey, they never had a plan. Yeah, they never had a plan. They just put it on the market, and then if it doesn't sell in twenty four hours, yeah. they're in straight panic mode, which isn't fair for the realtor to sell that mm -hmm. to the seller because all they want to do is just change the price, change the price, change the price. If your only strategy is to change the price, it's a bad strategy. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. you know. So normalizing in a market is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. All right. You agree with that? I totally agree with that completely. So we're talking about pre-approvals really quick, and I want to just brush up on this. You got your pre-approval. Yep. What shouldn't you do during the process? Okay, well don't, don't buy a new car. Don't open new credit cards. Keep things the same. Don't change jobs. If you are going to change jobs, please call, and we'll go over it together in detail. <laughs> um, just basically re remain the same. I mean, you're, you're buying your house. That's the most important thing to you, in my opinion. If you buy a new car, I don't think you can live in it. So you, you probably want to. So, but you know, they, they check their credit, mm -hmm. right? If you get to check your credit well, within uh, that time period. The way that it works from a mortgage lending perspective, if you have new inquiries all the way up until the day of closing, um, there's an under, there's a debt monitor that could be pulled. And if there's new credit inquiries, the questions asked was new debt open. If new debt was open, you have to take into consideration the balance and the payment. If it puts your debt ratio over the top and you did it the morning before closing and you're supposed to close at three o'clock, I don't think you're going to close anymore. Big denial. So, yeah, it's not a good situation. If you open new debt after you close, it, the next day, I mean, that's 
now you bought your house and you, that's I, I don't recommend opening a ton of debt obviously but <laughs> if you do it the next day that's your business yeah. so while you're in the mortgage process be very very careful on that definitely and then you always do the voe right yep. before right before closing the day <clears throat> of closing someone's going to call your employer and say hey are you actively employed there so don't and a voe change verification of employment verification so of don't employment. don't change jobs the day of or the day before <laughs> closing don't put in your two-week notice because you're refinance and get a bunch of cash out it's probably a bad idea it's very simple for us guys to say this stuff but a lot of buyers don't realize that yep. you know and a lot of sellers don't see this stuff too so like when i'm presenting offers to sellers i've actually gone and vetted mm -hmm. the lender if they're if they're not buying cash and they're getting a loan i vet the lender and i ask them all these things did you verify this stuff? Did you check that they had the actual assets mm -hmm. to be able to have uh, for their closing costs and down payment and all that stuff? So it's all very, very, uh, very basic for us when we do it day in and day out. Yep. But I think it's important that you guys understand how important it is to stay the same mm -hmm. once you have your pre-approval. Very valuable. Very <laughs> valuable. <laughs> so, well, I hope you guys are finding this information useful. Our plans is to bring Kevin back as much as possible to give you information on what's happening on the market. I think it's very important that uh, we keep our finger on the pulse of what's happening and you as well. And of course, if you ever have any questions, don't hesitate, reach out to us. Uh, we'll put our contact information below. Don't forget to subscribe and we look forward seeing you and you on the next one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>